we're back. Stripe Show Podcast on a Tuesday back in the saddle. I'm your host, Travis Fulton. Thank you for making us part of your day. Took last week off. Had to get away. Clear my mind. Amelia Island. Omni Resort. You've never been. You're looking for kind of a fun place to go with the family. Highly recommend it. Amelia Island's a great spot. Omni Resort does a fantastic job. Kid-friendly. And uh, we had a great three days. But I'm back. I'm refreshed. I'm ready to go. I'm ready to pick a winner. You know what that means? My man from at Read the Line, Key Stewart, back in his home office. How you doing, buddy? Did you miss me last week? I, I Do we have a new sponsor about golf and Omni Resorts? That was a deep read right there. <laughs> well, you were going no, with. You know? No, Omni's not a sponsor. But, you know, I, I just, I like to, I like to call out the places that, that are great in customer service. I, I do know um, the GM there a little bit, and uh, he's always very good to us. And but I got to tell you, like his whole team, he sets the tone. They're on it there, man. Like they do, they do a really good job. It's right on the ocean, super kid friendly. I got a nine, eight year old. I, I, I dig it, man. We've been going every spring break, and they just continue to exceed expectations. So there you have it. Hey, you know, uh, style filters down. Yeah, yeah, it does. Yeah, it does. And um, well, I mean, the style on the PGA Tour right now, let's just let's just start there. Um, you know, all kinds of first time winners. You just don't know where these people are going to come from. And, uh, you know, we go Peter Malnati a few weeks ago. I had to step away when Malnati wins. Like I just, OK, my head's about ready to explode. And we come back and here we are in Texas and Jaegerbaum gets his first win. Yeah. What in the hell is going on on the PGA Tour? I mean, on six times on the corn ferry tour. I know. No, I'm kidding. You know, yes. I, yeah. It's uh it was, what's what's more interesting is that, you know, Scotty lost by one and he gave the field five to six shots, depending on mm -hmm. how you feel about certain. I mean, it's it's pretty crazy. Um that uh I mean he comes down the stretch there and he just starts hitting those iron shots inside ten feet, one after another after another, and then he can't putt again. You know, he can putt when yep. we have Wyndham, but no, and now he can't putt. Great. Awesome. I, I'm I'm half joking, obviously, with with Peter winning. I was very happy for Peter Manati. How can you not like the guy? His second win on the PGA Tour, and now Steven Yeager, who, um, in in many ways, is a true journeyman. Thirty four years of age, uh, from Germany. Six times he's won on the Corn Ferry Tour, which is I think second most. I think only Jason Gore has won more. Seven, um, yeah. Gore's got seven. Gore's got seven. I mean, so look, this dude can play. Uh, he he's been living. It seems like on the first and second page of the leaderboard. And yeah, I mean, he, he had a little good fortune come his way. I think he shot even on the back. Um, you know, he didn't birdie a couple of the, the birdieable holes coming in, but make no mistake. He, he, he got his win and, um, it was cool to see Joel Damon hanging out there. Um, that means a lot, you know, to those guys, I think when players hang out and uh, it speaks to the kind of guy that he is. And yeah. so to your point about Scheffler, you know, look, I, I think we're seeing improvement, you know, with Scotty Scheffler. Um, with his putter, it's going to be interesting to see where that takes us, you know, for the rest of the year, especially situationally, because we know Sheffler's going to be there from T to green. Keith, the guy's the best in the world. We know that when you're the best in the world, T to green, you're going to be there come Sunday. Um, I think the question is going to become with Scheffler is what it looks like situationally down the stretch um, to win tournaments. You know, is he that guy that's going to put more away than others. We're used to seeing Tiger just put every field away every time he gets in that situation. A lot of comparisons to Tiger about his ball striking. But Scotty's not Tiger. You know, I mean, it, it, he's just not. There's probably never will be. But it will be interesting to see where his putter takes him for the rest of the season. Yeah, I, I, I still think at this stage it's – it's unfair to compare Scotty to Tiger. I mean, it yeah, is. he's on a heater with his ball striking, but he went 72 events before he won one. And yes, his last three years have been epic and congratulations. But, um, you know, Tiger has a couple par five or uh, top fives in a row and he doesn't win one. I mean, we're surprised. And yeah. uh, what we saw Scotty do this weekend, I mean, at the end of the day, five feet, four inches on the last hole. Yeah. Did you really think it was going in or did you think it was 50, 50? All right. Forget mm -hmm. the API, the players for just a second, right? Scotty hits it in there close. As you get ready, 
to predict and cover the Masters. Did you really think that putt was going in? Or did you think it was a 50 shot? I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't know. I have an answer to that yet. Um, but it was uh, interesting nonetheless. Well, 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 I think that is the point, right? I mean, Scotty has been Tiger T to green. I mean, that, I don't I don't think anybody ever thought that they would see someone dominate T to green like Tiger did. And Scheffler is showing it. I mean, he, the guy is absurd. I mean, he's from another planet from T to green, how good he is. And so it is kind of Tiger-esque from that standpoint. Then you put the flat stick in his hand and situationally, and that's where, okay, the gap is large with Tiger in putting away tournaments. Now, maybe Tiger, or maybe Scotty will get to that point where he starts just putting those things away. Who knows? It is unfair. Tiger's, in my view, the best of all time. And the reason for that, not only is it tee to green, it's when the chips are down, Tiger makes that putt. And, uh, and he puts him away. So anyway, let's move on. Tiger's in the field uh, for the Masters. We'll get to that next week when we break it down and we all yeah. pick Tiger to win the Masters, right? But this week, <laughs> maybe we go to the Valero Texas Open, TPC San Antonio, AT&T Oaks. Man, I can remember. I can remember when they built this place. Uh, we actually put an academy there, tour right. academy at TPC San Antonio. And uh, we actually, I've been there many times, right when it opened. Speaking of a really cool place to go with your family, that's another good one right there. The Alamo? Yeah, right there. With They have the water park and the backdrop. A lot of the families go to this one. It's good. But um, the golf course, right? There's only been probably mm, three times in my life where I walked off a golf course and I thought about never playing golf again. And... This wow. was one, this was one of them at this golf course playing. We had it. We opened the academy there, and the wind was blowing like it felt like 180 miles an hour. Um, Good and times. it just like when the wind gets going there, as you know in Texas, yeah, and on that golf course, and and it's pretty penalizing and this and that. Like I just got beat down, and I just wanted off the course, and I never thought I was going to go back. And then you watch these guys play it. Right. And and the conditions are going to be, they're not going to get a ton of wind. It doesn't look like. And you watch no. these guys play it, and then it just hits you again, like how much better they are. <laughs> and, <laughs> right. Is that, where, like, is that where this soliloquy is going? You know, like, they're good. You know, just like it just, you just realize how great they are when they get around this golf course in like 20, 25 mile an hour winds. But anyway, good course, uh, fun property. When you break it down, what kind of player are we looking at? You know, there's a couple interesting things that I think the average person might overlook or, you know, when you're reading all of your uh, betting content that, you know, somebody might not see. Uh, but with my PGA perspective, I'm I'm going to key on a couple of things. Number one, this is a very difficult golf course from an approach perspective. The greens are small. They're top 10 smallest, you know, on the tour. But what's interesting is that at 7,400 plus yards, you get this idea that like, yeah, it's like a top five longest course on tour too. So you're thinking length, long iron play and everything. But I've looked back at the last 10 top tens and the biggest gains on approach were coming from inside a hundred yards. And we don't say this very often, especially mm -hmm. on a, like a 7,400 yard plus golf course. I'm like, why is that the case? I got to look at this a little closer. So I looked at the maps. I looked at the scorecard. And then you start to see it. You've got four par fives that average almost 600 yards in length. So for a majority of the field, those are three shot holes. So there's, there's four of those shots, right? And then you've got five par fours that are under 410 yards. Well, if guys are blasted away there. Then there's more shots under 100 yards. And then you start to see how it all comes together. And you say to yourself, huh. That's interesting. There's something to that. So, yes, we have to favor approach here, but you also want to favor it from 100 yards and in. And you wonder if, like, somebody like tournament favorite Rory McIlroy, is that is that his wheelhouse? Because it hasn't mm -hmm. been. And, you know, so that's one thing I'm paying attention to. The other thing is that at 74 yards, I don't know that length really matters when, you know, second in strokes gain career here is like Matt Kuchar. And you've got winners <laughs> like J.J. Spawn. And people are talking about, you know, favorites this week. They're talking about Billy Horschel and Ryan Moore and guys like that. You know, I think this is very much off the tee 
because the bunkering in the trees can be so penal that it's a position golf course, it's patience off the tee, and then it's attack with your wedges when you have them in your hands. And when you don't, you got to try to hit your greens as best you can. So um, those two things, and then just avoid bunkers. There's 64 of them. And, you know, Griffin obviously was not happy with sand when he made this place. I mean, the jagged edges to these things, these guys end up in all these nooks and crannies. A lot of the faces have long grass to them. Oh, they just brutal. They just sit in all sorts of, I mean, well, you're talking from experience, but, you know, covering this event, you know, it's just the worst set of bunker, like the most difficult, not worse, but the worst to deal with, the most difficult set of bunkers. I mean, it's like perennially in the top 10 most difficult on tour. So those are the three mm-hmm. things I think that kind of, you know, everyone else knows what they're looking for, but those are three things that I'm featuring that um, I think are going to, you know, narrow it down for me and and trying to predict it outright. Well, look at the winners here, right? Corey Connors, he's won a couple of times. Spawn. Yep. yep. My boy, JJ at uh, 2000, was it 22? Yeah, he won a 22. Yep. Spieth in 21. That was, a, that was a cool win. He had some great short game shots. I remember um, down the stretch, especially that one it was like a muddy lie. Remember that when he, what oh, was yeah, that? it was like 15, yep. 16, somewhere in there. And he got, and it was from, hand. and it was from what? 100 yards and in. Oh, that was a you great know? shot. That was yep. a great shot. Andrew Landry. Yeah, we're just screaming distance here, aren't we? In 18, Chapel, 17, Hoffman's one. Yeah. So I think that's a great breakdown. I, I really, I like that. And, and so I built a model a little bit around that, Keith. Oh, and the one factor that I Ooh. didn't put in at all is putting. I just took putting completely out. I'm going, oh. I'm going this week, Keith. No putt team. All right, no putt. So not not uh, one guy. Yeah, there's one. Just we'll we just okay. We're, there, right. yeah, there, okay, there's one. But right. I'm gonna throw some names at you, and you're gonna be like, Oof, okay. Wow. I mean, I've yeah. I've got a couple in my head already that I I can see you going with. I mean, Corey Connors won here twice for crying out loud. I that's one for sure. JJ Spawn. I mean, uh, yeah, <laughs> that's another one. Okay, so yeah, to would, my point, I, to he's my not point. a current name, but I, I've got I'm I'm like I've got lists of names in front of me all the time. I mean, yeah, and I don't. So I, I mean, so yeah. I've weighed out approach big time. To your point, right? We we got to okay. have approach. I, I I really factored in the wedge game as well. To your point, you know, the hundred yards, hundred twenty five, etc. Um, I factored in some greens and regulation game. Like I want to, you know, we're on the green opportunities gain. I, I weighed that out strokes gate T to green. Like everything here is about, all right, keep it in front of you. Don't have to be long. Uh, let's hit a lot of greens and you got to have a decent short game. And Can I ask you a quick gonna, question. We're going to roll the dice on the putter. Yes. Go ahead. What is, how would you get it behind you? Everyone always says, keep it in front of you. So oh, you know what I mean? Like, I don't, I don't, I don't want, you know, this way. Okay. Right. I, I don't, right. I don't want the big miss. And to your point, like you, you mentioned some names that have, that have, that have bode well here. Corey Connors doesn't have this crazy big miss. Matt Kuchar, no. you don't think about him having this crazy big miss. No. Um, Lucas Glover, right. He He's played pretty well here. He's got a, he's got a couple top, tw- he's got three top twenties in the last four tournaments here. Brant Snedeker's played decent here. Zach Johnson's played decent. I mean, these are some of the Dude, names. What are we? Right? Are we talking about the 2010 Ryder Cup team? What I'm are just we doing? saying, like you know? these are some of the names that have played well here on this right. weird golf course. Kind of weird. Right. It's kind of it's 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 kind of weird. It's pretty vanilla, so, other than the bunkers. It, it's all right. So, with that said, here comes this model, right? The oh, no boy. putt team. Yeah, Valero. 2024 and i went recent like who are my boys coming in that are Can getting I guess it some? done who are getting it done but let's just let's just you know pretend that 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 putter doesn't exist yeah go ahead and guess all right i need to guess a couple here all right go ahead. um uh all I'm right so right up off, right off the bat other than connor's i'm gonna go for the poor man Corey connor's i'm gonna go aaron rye two gloves rye he's, he's gotta be on there. that he's down he's there. got yeah, he, he he's in the top 20 He's in the top. He's 16. No. All right. No. Excuse me. Hold on. He's 11th. Yeah. Good one. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Here's one for you. Guy's been older guy, very much in the Matt Kuchar role. Uh, Ryan Moore. He's been striking the ball great <laughs> lately. Uh, he's healthy, right? Yeah. There you go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Number two. Yeah. 
Number two. Number two. Uh, let me see. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, how about full eject button last week by my man, Cashmere Keith Mitchell? He's got to be on there, right? Number four. All right. Oh, okay. man, I got two and four. I'm not betting Keith, uh, though. I'm not betting Keith. No. Um, you got to oh, have number man. one. I mean, he, he at the top of the board, he's my guy. Hideki. And and Hideki now has I mean Hideki's showed Hideki's, some life with this putter. Hideki's putter isn't nearly as bad no. as those other guys we just mentioned have right, been, which right? is why I like him at the top of the board. Oh yeah, I mean, I, okay. I, there's a lot to like about Hideki this week. Other than he'd be no, there's a lot to like about Hideki this week. All right, so there's I mean, a guy in the top five that's going to be my first look, but I, you know, I'm a good host, so I'm going to give you the first go. The best player, you love when I hit when I click the mouse. You love when I click the uh, mouse. Go ahead. All right. <laughs> the best player to have never played in a major championship is your hint. It's my oh. first play. No, that's that's easy. Who? That's that's Ludwig. You got it. Oh, I'm sorry, Ludwig. Ludwig. Yeah. Is it Ludwig? Well, Which way are we go? Whatever you That's want. Like, yeah. Okay, Guys winning it. this week. That's yeah. we call him what you oh, want. Aubert, wow. Aberg, whatever. Wow. Right? Wow. Just saying. Right? It's a player that never one. played a major. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I I I just I remember walking around RSM and watching what he did there on a golf course that you didn't you, you really shouldn't use driver, and you did. And then his wedges were unbelievable, and he goes 61 61 on the weekend. He's like the mm-hmm. best player in the field from 100 yards and in with a wedge, and he's one of the best drivers if Rory's not in the field. So, you know, like for me, I mean, I know the guy who yeah. took that picture right there. You know, it's, it's, you it's do pretty, you know, pretty what you're saying? Yeah. It is silky. I mean, it's, it's, it's really good. It's simple. It's powerful. Yeah. He's got the finesse game for those watching right now, like, or for listening, that what the hell are these guys talking about? I've got Ludwig Swing uh, up there right now, and we're just, we're just marveling at it. I mean, he is, um, he's the real deal right now. Coming here, he played here. He did play here as an amateur, right? I think he was here. They played college uh, golf in Texas. I mean, that's, well, I know, but he, but he played in this. I know that. I mean, but he played in this tournament, I believe. Maybe maybe I'm not maybe I'm mistaken, but anyway anyway first time as a professional getting I'll around that. that that's 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 uh that surprises me a little bit to be honest with you out of you the guy that preaches win equity all these things and I take notes and and you educate wait me wait a second Did, has Ludwig. has has Ludwig won in the last six months yeah he has he has mm-hmm. okay did Ludwig did he win points in the Ryder Cup in the last nine months. <laughs> What kind of All equity? Right. What kind of equity are you looking to buy? Right. All right. I'm buying this equity. Here's my boy this week. I'm got to get you know. I got to get ball striking. I've got to get all those things I talked about. Ooh. But I need a little bit of the putter too, and this boy can bring the putter, as we know, he can putt anywhere. Harris English. I think he's on his way back, folks. I mean, not that he went too far away, but. No. We know, uh, speaking of win equity, this guy can get it done. And and I like what I see uh, from this guy over, I would say, really the better part of two months. I had his uh, coach on, Justin Parsons. I talked off air quite a bit about Harris. And um, they cleaned up some things with him. And I, I just get the feeling that Harris is about ready to get back into the winner's circle. Um, all of the metrics that I talked about, he checks those boxes. He drives it well enough. His iron game is just steadily on the climb. We saw him at the players, positive 2.8. Uh, approach, positive 2.9 off the tee. Didn't putt great up to Harris standard. Still a top 20. Uh, 19th at the players, 21st at Arnold, 7th at Genesis, 17th at Waste Management. We're talking, what, four top 21s in his last four outings. Now he comes here. Keep it in front of him. And let's go positive 2.5 putter, positive three. I mean, Connor's won here at 0.4 last year for crying out loud. And Harris English can hit the ball as good as Corey Connors. There's your winner right there, Harris English. All right. He's gonna need he's gonna need to be much better with a wedge inside of 100 yards. All right. 
All of those other things are true. hundred percent. Look at that. I can yeah, see not... the difference. I can see the difference in, in what they're doing. We're not going to get into that. We'll save that uh, for another day. All right. Let's just, you know, back to the top of the board here. I think, you know, what's McElroy, where's his head at? We know huge week for him next week. Um, his yeah. wedge game is not the best to your point. Aberg coming in at 12. Matsuyama, we talked about, he's there uh, kind of hovering between 18 and 20. Spieth's won here before. Is Spieth looking ahead or is he like, you know, bearing down? Do you think Texas guy, he's, you know, he's, he's got good vibes Ready? here. We just kind of over, we just over, overlook him. Jordan Spieth has won twice in the last almost seven years. Wow. Straight facts. Yeah. Okay. No cap for your kids mm -hmm. there. Right. Okay. Prior to Valero and the Heritage, which he's won in the last couple of years, the win before that was Burkdale, which was 17th British Open. Wow. Jordan well, Speed's got a lot going on, man. I mean, that does that put it in perspective. perspective for you? He really does. Yeah. You know, like, I mean, and when you look at the numbers right now, and I love Speed, and I wish Speed was like doing – not even Scotty things, but like yep. he was like more relevant, like a JT and, and just like, mm -hmm. but, but like, I, I don't know what to say. You know, he, when he won here and what was it? 21, he had like one of his best iron weeks ever, you know, like, and lately you look at Spieth. I mean, you don't see him on your model because like you don't look mm -hmm. that far down. Right. Right. But like the, the approach game is like, it's, mm -hmm. It's it's all of it is very unspeath like, and I think yep. if anyone was looking ahead to next week, it would be Jordan because that's the one place where he could like you know he tra he's traveling to Mecca, you know that's the one place for him that steer you know steers him straight. But man, oh man, I I nobody roots for Jordan Spieth more. I mean, but like look at the last two starts, just bad missed cuts. Sloppy. This will give you an idea. Last twelve rounds bad. in the field. Last twelve rounds in the field. Strokes gain approach. He's one hundred and fortieth. <laughs> of 156 guys. I know it. He's at the bottom. Of which, yeah. Yeah. I, yeah mean, I, I, I steered way clear of Spieth this week. There's Connors, obviously. I mean, it doesn't take a lot to, to like Connors this week. He, he loves his place. He's won it twice. Max Homa still trying to find it. It feels like, um, from you know, for me, he's still trying to kind of put the pieces together. He's there at 25. I mean, you know, Fitzpatrick, Morikawa. I think in the in the middle of the board, Connors is obvious. I think if I had to stretch, I didn't bet this, but if I was going to pick another one up there, I, I you could you maybe you could talk me into Fitzpatrick. You know, it just it yeah. feels like it feels like Fitzpatrick is getting closer and maybe ready to win again. Am I too far off base, sir? No, I mean, um, you just may not know why, but players, he made an adjustment to his driver mm -hmm. that there had been an issue. And then we saw what he did at the players. So um, I think Fitzpatrick just wasn't getting the ball in play. And if you yep. start to model out his numbers and you just go by the numbers, you're, you're going to get a Fitzpatrick that's going to be way down the board in your chart there. But if you, if you look at his most recent start and then you say to yourself, okay, like, he's a good fit for this place because he's a great scrambler. He's a good putter and he's got a good bunker game. I mean, who will ever forget that fairway bunker shot to win the U S open? Um, you know, the guy. So if he's got the driver in order at this place, he's got to be in my mind, one of the favorites at the top to win outside of Corey and Hideki and Ludwig. Yep. You know, and then, you know, hopefully most people overlook him because it's his first time there. And they say they, they push him up to like 30 by Wednesday. And then, you know, I mean, you, I'll give you a choice. You want Fitzpatrick or you want Morikawa? Oh, Fitzpatrick. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, and I mean, in Morikawa, you know, is a world-class player. He's just, he's more in a speed mode right now. So, yeah. you know, yeah. at the top of the board, I'm with you there. Okay. Well, you know, as we as we work down, I mean, there's a couple guys in Noren and Horschel that are next. And, you know, Noren was has been playing some decent golf, and it's been good to see Billy Horschel get back. You I know, mean, I think it was a little bit of a grind there for Horschel uh, yep. for a period of time there um, at the end of last season into the beginning of this season. I mean, 
at the Sony, he had a D, you know, he had a top 20 there, but then played, he didn't play good at all um, on the West Coast. And yeah. then he comes back to Florida, hit the reset. And we talked about that, right? We talked yeah. about a number of guys. All right, West Coast swing, gosh, wasn't for me. Let's get back to Florida. Let's hit the reset button. Obviously, Billy lives not too far from where I'm sitting right now. And he knows Florida golf. Let's get let's let's start putting it together. And that's exactly what he did. Ninth in Palm Beach, missed a cut at the players, but 12th at Valstar, kept it going last week at Houston, where he finished seventh. And and so Billy to me is is putting the pieces together. I don't know. Do I like him here to win? Probably not, but I do like I, I do think. Billy keeps it going, and I wouldn't be surprised with another top 20. I agree with all that. Yeah. I agree with all Where that. Where would you take yeah. us? Where would you take us here as we as we work down the board? I mean, drive the ship here to the next name that, you know, that you have circled. There's three guys that are sitting right in the middle of the board when, you, when you're talking about 1 to 100 that I hear a lot of chatter on, um, either online or offline. and um, they all have very compelling um, arguments with which to bet. And that's Tom Kim, Aaron Rye, and Cbez, Christian Bezayden. Mm -hmm. And they're all right around 55 to 60 to 65 to one, right? Depending on uh, how things fluctuate. And it, it's just interesting, you know, like why did Bezayden skip last week? Right. The cutoff the top 50 for a master's was, was March. Maybe he didn't know, but it was March 31st. <laughs> And he was 55th in the world, and he goes in the top fives or top tens, which is realistic for him the way he's playing at Houston. He probably gets into Augusta, and now he's got to win this week in order to get in, and he's playing really, really well. So that, you know, like, and he can putt, and he's another guy like Aubert, who I just love from inside 100 yards. Mm -hmm. uh, Tom Kim, you know, last, you know he, he dropped out of the players because he was sick, not because he was injured. He had like 102 fever or something like that. So he got really sick. Um, last time somebody withdrew from the players, the next time they won was Rom, and he won the Masters. So it's pretty good. And Aaron Rye, if we're going team no putt, there's a guy, you talk about accumulating greens and regulation at this place. He will, he will accumulate as many as anyone in the field. And he needs a golf course that you don't need to be a great putter on in order to kind of break through. And Aaron Rye is one of the DP World Tour. So it's not like you know, this would be a new experience for him. And he's been playing very well. He's been striking the ball great lately. So I think you, I've been hearing a lot of chatter in that range there, more so than in the, in the 30, 40 land, you know, everyone's talking about Adam Scott. He's won on four different venues in Texas. You got Bo Hostler. He was good there a couple of years ago, but where's Bo been? Akshay sitting there, Eric Cole sitting there, you know, like, so I, I think there's a lot of value to be had in this 50, 60 range. All right, let's go back to my team no putt model <laughs> and see where we have last 12 rounds now. Keep in mind. Let me stretch it a little bit. Let's go, let's go 24. All right. Let me give oh, you just a I little. I mean, let's take a really you... bad putter, go to 36 rounds. <laughs> like take somebody who really can't putt. You know, you know the name that that I want to bet so bad, but his putter is just not good as Joel Damon. Oh, I mean, Joel, I Joel, mean. I mean, Joel Damon is is just on fire with his irons. I mean, he can go wedge yeah. game good. I mean, Joel Damon. And he's a straight driver, so he's good for this place. Really good, <sighs> really good. Yeah. I mean, is this? I mean, do you go there? I mean, well, man, he just yeah. There's just no flick it. You're just any any hope of of the putter coming to life. Uh, um, well, you Joel know, Damon's number two. Keith Mitchell we talked about is number three. Aaron Rye's number four. I think I look. The way the PGA Tour is going, I'm betting Aaron Rye. I, I am I am betting Aaron Rye this week. He's on team no putt. And I think you, you laid it out nicely in the way that he's playing. He's one of the DP World Tour. Aaron Rye is on my card. Another guy I haven't bet yet, team no putt, is Lucas Glover. <laughs> um, oh. No, I'm not going to do it. There's okay. Connors. That, there's Connors. You know who else is on Team No Putt right now in the last 24 rounds? You're not going to want to hear this. You're not going to want to hear this. Ludwig Abram. Number nine. Number nine. I guess it fits the MO. I like Bezaden Hut. 
I like Bezaden Hut. He might be the best wedge player in the field. Um, interesting with Bezaden Hut. I've been trying to follow that journey of swing coaches. Now he's got his old coach back. I think I texted you when I was out there at TBC Sawgrass, and I, I didn't see Jeff Smith hanging with them. I thought they did some really good work, and now Jeff's not there, and now his old coaches. Hey, so I don't know what's going on, but I mean, he he checks a lot of boxes here. You know, his driver gets a little weird at time, but in the approach game, handles the par fours, uh, gets a lot of good looks. Probably, you know, he's very solid. To, to, I mean, Bezaden Hut checks some boxes here. There's I mean, no he, he, uh, the guys, he's got the check marks out. He, no he, doubt he about does. it. He does. He does. Hey, I gotta, I gotta jump on this for a second, real quick. Ready? Okay. Yep. A pro- proximity inside a hundred yards. Number one, Ober. Number two, Joel. Number three, Sebez. There you go. There you go. Last, uh, last twenty-four rounds. Yeah. As a qualifier. So. So can Joel hit it to like four feet? That's what we need him to do. Maybe it's more like twelve. <laughs> My press drives. could be. I don't know. Could be. I don't know. I mean, five feet four <laughs> inches seemed very long on Sunday for some people. I'm betting Joel. Yeah, look. Can you imagine I did a parlay? Joel and Gino I or, to... love Joel and Gino. I mean, like I, 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 love, I think Joel's hitting the great, and, and he's one of the oh, best. Yeah. Wedge. So I'm, I'm maybe you know he goes positive two this week. So I'm I'm I'm, I'm sprinkling him as a long shot. Yeah, What's he in right maybe. now? Where, where, I just where, where's where's Joel at right now? He's in the Joel's um, got to be down around 100. Yeah, he's got to yeah. be 100 120 somewhere in there. Um, Joel is where'd he go? Can't find him. Maybe he's moving up the board. Let me throw this name at you and get a reaction. Okay. Austin Eckrow. I mean, is Austin Eckrow going to win twice in a month? That's the only Uh, question I have for you. Is yeah. Austin Eckrow good enough to win twice in a month? Hey, on the PGA a- Tour. After what I saw down the stretch in West Palm with the lead, it's good. Dude was in charge. Dude was in charge. He was. He was. Look at Ryan Moore. Ryan Moore Ryan. ranks way up there. Oh, Ryan Moore. No for you. you know, ninety to one, hundred to one, hitting it very well. Chandler Phillips, right. another one of those guys. You ready? Yep. Joel. In his last three, he's played there four times, but in his last three Valero Texas Opens, he's been positive with the putter in all three of them. Okay. There you go. Yep. You heard it here first, folks. Just saying. If I could just find, if I could just find his odds and where they are right now, it's got to be around 100. Go back to my model here. My, my model's... Could be the ticket this week. Just very well could be the ticket outside of Harris English, who is not going to show up on this because Harris can putt, but also is trending in the other parts. But to your point, needs to have a good needs to have a good um, week with the wedges. Ben on. He's in the top ten. Yeah. Novak, we've seen him pop. He's in the top ten again. This is. Factoring in all the key metrics outside of the putter. But Joel, Tia, 200 to 1. 200 to 1. That's disrespectful the way he's hit. I mean, my God. I mean, you don't jump on that's that. That's only half of what Milanati was. If you don't jump on that. If you don't jump on that. That's disrespectful. The way that he's hitting it. I mean, I think that FanDuel was just asleep at the wheel. They didn't know that Joel had gained with the putter in his last three starts. It's, your, um, it's an opening. Best ball striker, strokes and approach. Last 24 rounds, Keith Mitchell, Moore, Damon, Connors. I like this Victor Perez, too. I, I think he's another name down the board that, um, I don't know, he, he just, he, he gets some discussion as well. But, I mean, um, but at 100 to 1, you're going to go with Victor Perez or Andrew Novak? I mean, let's, let's, let's talk apples to apples. I, I'm going to go Victor Perez. I'm going to go Come Victor on. Perez, 17th at the Houston Open. Approach game check, positive with the putter. Not a great putter. He was 16th uh, in, in West Palm. I don't know. I, I, I like, I, I kind of like Victor Perez. I, I think I'm going to, I think I'm going to give Victor Perez the nod over Novak. 
Okay. You're going to, you, you want Novak, is what you're saying. Well, I just, Victor Perez, um, he hits a lot of greens in regulation, but he, he could be better from 100 yards and in. Uh, the short game's not great, and the putters, eh. But I guess we don't need a putter this week. That's We've right. established that. That's We've right. Okay, that. Wed, 100 to 125 yards last 24 rounds. But Zayden Hunt, number one, like you said. Landry, who's won here, number two. Cody Gribble, Damon, Taylor Montgomery, Kazire, Matsuyama, Chad Ramey, who played well last week. It's just, you know, like those little, they're not little, but like the idea that there's like 50% of the holes there, you're going to approach from 100 yards and in, 110 yards and in. Yep. I mean, that's, that's, that's how, so like the, those top tens that I, that I did a deep dive on. Right. Mm -hmm. So they average like 22 and a half subpar scores or birdie or better scores per year. Right. And the average winning score is like 16 under par so that you're going to make mistakes. And, you know, you've got to be able to score when those opportunities happen. And if you're just hitting it to 18, 20 feet from, you know, 85 yards, you're just not going to keep up this week. There'll be plenty of guys that can do it otherwise. You know, and like a Cbez is just, that guy kill you from there. You know, 85, 90 yards out, 105 yards out. He's going to hit it inside 10 feet every time. And then he's a good putter. Same thing with Ludwig. You know, so... You know, and, and Joel hit it there, but then is he going to make those putts or enough well, of them to get to, to 23 birdies? 22 well, that's birdies. that's the long shot in this, right? I mean, you have the conversation in, with with Peter Malnati a couple weeks ago at 400 to one, right? And there's plenty yeah. of there's there's plenty of metrics to to challenge and trying to find the angle on um, why you would, you know, consider someone at those odds. Um, I think at this particular venue for me in stretching it out in the odds and trying to find that angle, it would be based off the history of the course. Like it's not set up for someone who you don't have to necessarily be a great putter here. I mean, you just got to look at the winners, right? Look at the True. people that designed True. the course, you know, that's kind of oh, yeah. the way that the, this place is set up. It's not yeah. going to reward. I mean, it's a great point. Greg Norman, and you know, his consultant was, <laughs> It gets better. It gets better. Uh, I do know. I do know. I do know. He used to date his daughter. God, I'm drawing a blank. Tell me. I'm drawing a blank. Sergio. Sergio. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. So it's yeah. a ball, ball striker, you know, especially right. off the tee. You're talking about two of the two of the straightest drivers of your and yeah. my lifetime in Sergio and Greg. And then you're just, I mean, every Norman course is always the same. It's all risk reward off the tee. And then when you get to the green, it, it might as well be, you know. Don't even bring your aim point footwork, right? That the whole thing's just flat. It's just crazy. <laughs> it's like, but then, when well, you know, when I remember was the wind blowing thirty. Well, yeah, well, that's true too. But like, yeah. that's why I, I remember a couple of years ago when I was looking at this and I learned the Sergio thing, and I was like, that, that's a tandem right there for you. Yeah, you know, those are the two. That's it. I mean, it's just it right from the very beginning, right? Right from them, and you think I would like the place because that's me. Like I'm not a, you know, I'm a 50 50 putter. So you think I would have loved that place, but when you stand on those greens, yeah, and they are kind of flat, and these bunkers that you get in with this grass and yeah, the wind's blowing 35. It's just like my God, I don't know, I don't know, man. Like I couldn't imagine dealing with that every day. But um, all I'm right, surprised. so. So, so it's kind of a, we're taking an interesting angle here um, this week. I'm really happy to hear you bring up Aaron Rye. Like that, that's that's one that I'm glad that you like this week because it was another one that I liked here. You know, towards the middle of the board. I don't think I'll bet Eck Road. I think you you bring up some. He he does feel like he's kind of got the game here. Montgomery's a good wedge player. Um, you know, too good a putter, uh, huh? Too good of a putter. Too, to too good of a putter. putter well, that's the here. point, though. He, he can't separate himself against a guy yeah. that's a better ball yep. striker and an average yep. putter. Like right. that's, I mean, that's what strokes gained is. Now, yep. hey, real quick on Aaron Rye. I am okay. an Aaron Rye fan, and okay. here's why. Two years ago, I go to Riviera, and Tiger shows up by surprise. Right? You know, he puts himself in the field as part of the the um, accident comeback, and that. Wednesday morning, he plays in the Pro-Am, first tee time, like 6.30 in the morning, and it's 40 degrees, blowing 20. It is freezing right. out, right? All right. We make the turn, and one player from the field 
comes out and watches Tiger and walks with his pro-am, pro-am group on a Wednesday for nine holes, Aaron Rye. And so I walked over to him and I said, I feel like you're in this field. Like you should have something better to do, like practice or something. He goes, Hey man, I've never seen it live. And I just, before it never happens again, this is my opportunity. I'm going to watch. And I was like, Oh man, like what a perspective. So right. he's, he's a guy who can win. I mean, what he won the Genesis Scottish open in an October windy one, you know, with a very low score where, you know, you, you can only make so many putts up there at the Renaissance club. So like, you know, rye here, if it blows a little bit and he's hitting it really good right now. I mean, mm-hmm. we saw, you know, last, last week for sure. Um, and I would root for that guy in a heartbeat. You know, I, I like him. So I think for me, Matsuyama, English, Aaron Rye, uh, Perez, I'll probably sprinkle a little Joel. Like those are, that's kind of, you know, stretching the board there a little bit is, is where my head's at. I think that's, you know, Horschel's interesting. I think, I don't know if I'll, I don't think I'll play him, but it's good to see him back playing well. And um, I, I, a top 20 feels, feels near with him. You know, Nate Lashley kind of checks out. He's another guy that checks out with some of these um, yeah. metrics that I put in there. Uh, but I, I'm comfortable with that. I'm comfortable. I, I miss anybody? Um, no, nah, I mean, at the top, you know, where I'm, where I sit, mm-hmm. um, a little lower, I haven't made my final decisions yet, but you know, um, Ryan Moore is very interesting to me. Um, Novak's interesting to me. Mav McNeely is interesting to me. Um, and then one other guy that, um, well, two other guys, KH Lee is interesting to me sitting at 90 to one, but there's another guy sitting at 90 to one that I was surprised that you didn't bring up Cage this Lee. week. Nice. Okay. And uh, Cage Lee's played good lately. Yep. And he he, he's won, he's won twice in Texas. So yep. Yep. Um, he's got that down. Um, but uh, there's two guys that you in the last six or seven months have been very high on their um, kind of progression as, as PGA tour pros. One has been Cam Davis. That's not who I'm talking about, but the other one shares one of his names. And that's Davis Thompson. And I think this could be a good fit for him. Really? I'm not 100% there yet, but. Um, Interesting. Somebody somebody in that little potpourri of names right there is going to fill out my betting card of probable names this week, you know. And, um, you know, at, at the, you know, he's Decky O'Bear, but down there are ways, man. Aaron Rye, Davis Thomas, some of these guys really catch my attention um, with what they're doing. Matt McNeely is another one. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I think I was, I I think in, in recalling my uh, analysis of Cam Davis, I think I was probably higher on his progression. And then Davis Thompson maybe a little more of his ceiling based off how he drives the ball. Um, I do think his approach game seems to be getting better. Um, but I was, have I been that big on Davis? Have I been over the last year? Okay. All right. Yeah. Not last year, the last, um, you know, six, six months. months. Yeah. Yeah. That's six months. Yeah. I think his you iron know, game is his iron game has, has definitely, has showed signs in the last year into this year. Um, obviously a little more course knowledge now as he kind of works around again, a little erratic with the putter. Yeah. You know, he seems to be a little up and down there. Um, short game, but he's, I think he's, he's ranked 16. Seems to be steadily improving. Yeah. I mean, it, it's, he, it's, it's coming along with Davis. There's no doubt. It's, it's definitely coming along with Davis. Um, this week, no, he doesn't. He doesn't fit the criteria. He's a top doesn't twenty-five fit. ball striker, right? Doesn't he's great it. at scoring too, on par fives. Too good of a putter. He's a too good of a putter. Damn it! <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> he's right in the middle. He's in that. He's in that no man's land. 
He's really good. He's really good with a wedge yeah. inside 100 yards, and he's great with his driver. So I feel like, you know, that's like the Charlie Hoffman recipe here. You know, you, it you is. bomb it down there. You're really good with your wedges, and then you know you, you you're mediocre at putting for the week, and then you win. You know, it is so. it is Connors and Hoffman season. There's no doubt. It is um, Corey Connors and Charlie Hoffman. Last five rounds, they are two of the top three strokes gain performers. Hey. Matt Kuchar sandwiched in between. It's twelve forty-five on a Tuesday. These this is what we're looking at. Right. You know, all right. I can't talk about the Texas Open anymore. That's it. Those are the names. One week. One week. I'll be down One in Augusta. Away. You'll be in Augusta, joining us live. Yeah. From uh, yeah. Augusta, wear that. Please wear that that green uh, sweater. I have a green jacket, by the way. That I'm a member here, so it looks just like winning. I'll wear that tomorrow or next Tuesday. I've yeah. been already doing some research on that. Um, and so I will come, I'll come. I'm not gonna tell you, I'm not gonna tell you who wins right now. Come on. So I'll tell you, uh, I did pick yeah. it last year though, by the way. So that was, that was good. That was, that was a tough one. John Rahm, yeah. that was you know, yeah. if you told me you went two for two, I'd really be impressed. You picked, uh, Scotty off of three wins and then you went John Rahm. I did. So I picked the good last job. two. So yeah, yeah. no big, no big, <laughs> no big deal. No big deal. Who's going to win this week is, is the big question. We're going Malnati. Uh, um, Jaeger, Jaeger bomb, and Rye. Could be, could be, could be. Rye, Aaron Rye. I mean, the books for a guy that doesn't putt it very well, him sitting right there in the fifties tells you a lot. Yeah, right? it does I like it? If this is I like it. if this was a week where where strokes gain putting was more of. A skill required, that guy's odds would be 110. It'd be double that. Mm-hmm. But, you know, he's sitting right there with Akshay. Two great ball strikers that can't putt. Yeah. It's interesting. This is the week. This is the week. All right. There you have it. Lower Texas Open. Keith Stewart at Read the Line. Thank you, buddy. Back next week. The Masters. Can't wait. Peace.